Hi guys, Tom here. Um, so I'm not I'm not doing a product review today. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to re-wick a tank, something like a pro. This is a pro tank too, something like this sort of tank. Um, any sort of bottom feed coil um, or bottom replacement coil, should I say? So I'll unscrew the tank from here. Now the reason I'm going to re-wick this today is because it's been leaking fluid through the bottom a bit now the tank's been uh, sorry the coil's been in this tank um for around a month um so it's getting a bit of a burnt flavor as well so i was going to change it anyway but it's been leaking i don't know if you can see in there there's actually a drop in there you can't really tell but there is a drop of liquid in there it's been leaking out of the bottom <clears throat> so um, I'll just unscrew the tank I'll do it upside down even though there's not really any liquid in there um, oh, and that's your coil in your way <laughs> uh, that's the coil in your base so you just unscrew it like that base get rid of that uh, I'll just wipe it off a bit because there's a little bit of juice uh, now you can buy obviously you can buy these coils uh, you should be able to buy them from anywhere that sells a pro tank too or any Kanga products you can get these coils <clears throat> uh, now to rewick this actual unit put a new coil in it should I say um, works out a little bit cheaper overall um, if you burn through them quite quickly if you use it on something like an EVIC or variable wattage voltage device and you have it quite high which I do that says 5.5 but I usually have it about 7 so it does only take a couple three weeks at most before I start getting a burnt flavour um, most of the time um, so it for me generally it would work out cheaper for me to recoil these um as I think it's four or five pound for half a dozen of these I think. It's been a while since I've bought any. Um because I've been recoiling them myself. Um so generally if you if you're a heavy vapor or whatever it probably would work out better and they're not difficult to do once you've done it a few times this one's probably going to take me five minutes ish because um, obviously I'm going to do it a lot slower and try and do it neater so I can uh, so I can teach people how to do it basically but once you've done it once or twice I mean you can even make up your coils pre-made um, wrap the coil around the wick Put them in a bag, and when it wants changing, do that rather than doing it um, every time. So I'll go to close-up cam now, and I'll show you how how to do that. Right, guys. <clears throat> so this is the wick here, or the coil, should I say? Um, I've got it on this cloth here. I'm just going to give it a dab because it's a bit covered with juice. So I'll just give it a, a little wipe off. Right, so. First thing, take your little rubber off there <clears throat> and put that to the side. Make sure you do not lose that. And make sure it remembers. Remember to put it back on, otherwise your tank will be leaking. Right. So usually, what you can do is just give that. Oh, just pop straight off. But you give your spout this chimney little wiggle or a pull like that, and it will come straight off. Right, so then inside there, if you can see that, focus, you've got two little wicks sat on top. Take those out. Now you can keep those and put those back in if they're not completely burnt, which these ones out they look in pretty good. Yeah, they look alright. So put those to one side. And then in there, what you've got left and keep in the camera sorry about that is your coil and 
one bit of wick that's covered in juice. So now what you want to do is take this, you've got a little white rubber on the bottom there and this bit here in the bottom is like a neck, like a pin and that just holds, well that's part of your connection but it just holds that everything in basically. So what you want to do, now I've got a, a dart here <laughs> I've seen many people use all sorts of different tools. Now I just like that because they just popped out nice and easy. <clears throat> so just between that rubber and the top of that pin, just stick it in, pull it out. Stick that to one side and do not lose it. If you flick it out like I just did, make sure it's not going to fly across the room. And you're going to spend half an hour looking for it. <clears throat> then what you'll see here is... The light's a bit bright here. Just a second, guys. A little bit better. Yeah, right. There, there's a little wire. And it's just hooked onto that rubber. <clears throat> which will be your positive connection. What you want to do is just flick that off. And then you should be able to get your nail around the rubber and just pull that white rubber out, which I can't seem to do. So I've got some grips here. Careful not to ruin the rubber though. There we go, that's just popped out. <coughs> and it's covered in juice because it's been leaking. So now that wick should just come out now. There we go, it's completely free. And it's a very mucky one. So, get rid of that in the bin. So now we've just got this bit left and all of your other bits there. So, move them back out of the way. Now what I'm going to do is I have got some pre-made wicks here that came with um, <clears throat> came with my RB1 uh, from Totally Wicked which I've got a video on um, here I've got some 2mm 1m silica wick I'm just going to use a little bit of this now it's probably not the best thing for this uh, there's lots of other wicks I'm no expert and I don't claim to be <clears throat> there are probably some better things you could use than this better types of wicks so what I want to do is lay it across there it wants to be sticking out a little bit on either side and then I'm just going to cut it off a pair of scissors, or I've seen people use nail clippers, all sorts of different stuff. Uh, <clears throat> here I've got some 0.20 gauge canthal, and I'm just going to cut off. Now, you, when you first try this, you tend if you buy your canthal and your wick so on, you tend to, with your cantho, uh, I've seen lots of people when they first do it, they tend to cut it too short because they're trying not to waste it. Um, the longer the better I say for, for doing this because it's very annoying when, it, when you get to the last bit and you're just going to try and connect it all up and it's not long enough. So then what to do, see this is much harder for showing, <coughs> I should have cut the, the wick a bit longer to show properly how to do it. Uh, it makes it very awkward to show. So basically, try and hold it and just wrap it up. Now I'm going to have to go <laughs> 
definitely going to have to cut another piece. There's no way I'm going to be able to show properly how to do it like that. And I'll trim it off at the edge, at the end. So, <clears throat> that's a bit better. Uh, now, with this, you could... I've seen lots of people get a pin and just shove the pin in and it keeps this nice your wick nice and rigid um, so you can see what you're doing right so I'm just going to wrap it around right. there the Alright, I'm just going to scooch them up together because they're a little bit far apart. So I've got four wraps there. Um, I'm going to go for six wraps, I think. There. So. Uh, it's very difficult to see there. So that's about right. Right, so now what I'm going to do, but make sure they're both facing the same way, your little legs coming off. Thread the legs down through the hole. There we go. <coughs> Right, and now I need a bit of. Right, uh, I just had to sort of undo it a little bit there, and now I think I think that's a lot better. Some of them were touching a little bit; <coughs> wasn't quite. I would like it to be. So, legs down through the hole as I showed you before. I still don't think that's quite right. So what I'm going to do is just you don't want the wires to be too close as too close the holes or oh, like that one sticking out of the hole well, they need to be on the inside which again is another reason why this dart as daft as it may seem comes in handy this is probably the hardest coil I've ever built <coughs> it's not really easy when you've got a camera in front blocking your hands. So, alright, then what you want to do is it doesn't matter which one, but one of these wires wants to go, <coughs> one of the wires sticking out there, you thread the rubber down it. And you push it all, you push the rubber in, which is not the easiest thing to do. But eventually, it will go in. There we go, and it's in. <clears throat> so, the one that's on the outside of the rubber, you can just trim off. Sorry, I'm not keeping it in focus. There we go, that's trimmed off. And the one that goes through the hole of the rubber. <coughs> You just want to trim off 
So let it stick out a tiny little bit. There we go, it's hooked. So it's basically hooked over the top of the rubber. And then that little pin, shove that back in. There we go. Um, now what I'm going to do actually, I'm going to cut a little bit of this 2mm silica wick for the top. Done. I'm going to put that in there on top of the other one. There we go. Like so. Push your spout back in. And that's what you've got. So now I'm just going to trim those. There, that's one. That's two. Shove that on there. <coughs> and there, it's done. So it took me a lot longer than I was hoping. Uh, but I've never done this for a camera before. <coughs> and it was a bit of a struggle because the camera's kind of in my way a bit. So I'm going to put it back in the base now, uh, fill the tank up and show you how it works. Right guys, so just re-coiled uh, the Pro Tank 2 and I've put it back in the base and filled it with liquid. I was going to do that on camera but I forgot, but I have got a, another video on the um, Kanga Pro Tank if you want to go on my channel and watch that. So that's in. Uh, I've had it sat now for about 10-15 minutes. I did prime the um, the wicks so it wouldn't have taken that long anyway to come through. I'm just going to stick it on the... Uh, just give me a second. Uh, I'm just going gonna to stick it on the EVIC and see what the coil reads at. Um, and then I'll give it a vape and show you how it works. Uh, I'm just wiping the juice out of the top of the EVIC from when it leaked into it because I forgot to do that. Right, so I'll stick it on here, see what it comes up as 1.5. It's a little bit lower than I wanted. Uh, but I was having a bit of trouble coiling it, as you probably saw, because of the camera being in my way. So I'm going to turn it up to 7 watts. Actually, round about what I normally have it at. Um, yeah, so let's give that a try. Not too bad, could be a bit better. I think I think it hasn't properly soaked through. Let's give it another try. That's much better. So that's working pretty well, flavour's good. It's got a little bit of that new coil taste, but that'll go after it a bit. Um, yeah. So that's how you recoil Kanga Pro Tank. So, thanks for watching guys. Uh, check out my channel and go watch my other videos. Thank you.